you were supposed to come and make it clap. All right, so welcome back to another episode of the How'd I Get Here podcast, the podcast with positivity, progression, and finding your own path. It's your co-host, Mr. Brown Broken Guapo, 10 toes down, big head up. It's a beautiful day out. I got a haircut. I'm fine as fuck. See, like, yeah. But you didn't have to do all that, bro. You could have just had a little bit of energy, a little bit of pizzazz, and not forget your fellow co-hosts. I ain't forget. I was just, I'm used to doing what it is that I do. Sometimes you got to pivot. This is you true. never saw that Friends episode? Pivot, pivot, <laughs> pivot. <laughs> <laughs> no. That too white for you? Um, no, I liked Friends. I feel uh, like an iconic, like, top Pivot! Top. <laughs> he got this big-ass couch, and he was trying to get it up this tiny-ass stairwell in his apartment. So all you hear him say to Rachel is, pivot! Pivot. For like 30 minutes, like the whole episode. Because they didn't want to break it apart, so they were trying to like turn the couch and keep it still going up straight, but it's like you have the railing and then the wall, so like you couldn't be pivoting anything. He just kept saying, pivot, pivot. Yeah, I missed that one. I like I don't yeah, dislike Friends, but Friends has got to be one of those things, like there's nothing else on, and I'm just like, oh. Friends know. are how I met your mother. How I met your mother. My guy. Yeah. For sure. I'm going to go with Friends. Ooh. Just be Okay, I'm only going to go Nasty. with Friends just because growing up, it was cool to see a show that was also based out of Long Island. Oh, I didn't even know that. Mm-hmm. I thought it was in Manhattan. They also had parts where they like said, like, oh, we're moving to Long Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. Ash, you just got to be strategic when you're talking about to the mic. Because when you look that way, it don't pick you up. It's your bad. Ooh, don't drop the laptop. Ow. You saw that, right? I, I did. Just, that's how Jonathan Majors got to anyway, Yo, that's crazy. Wow. He just got probation. Wow. But even still. All right. It's your boy Spence. <laughs> King Aquarius, Wealth Strategist. I'm going to hold off on to the other part until like, it's fully done. Um, as you should. As you should. Niggas uh, getting excited yeah. prematurely. <laughs> oh. No. But... Yeah, today's a beautiful day. It is a beautiful day outside. Like, I went outside in a t-shirt and shorts earlier. And I am fine as well. With some flippy flops. Confidence is key. Not your Gucci flip flops. Nah, I'm broke. Got your bitch broke, baby. my Gucci slip um, flops. But we also got Ash here. The lovely Ash Bagash. Hey, y'all. How's it going? Happy Tuesday. Club going up? On a Tuesday. Can we do that every week? Club? No, like, she say, say that. Bus, club, another club, no sleep. On your knees. Another club. Do that thing, that one. Oh. Pop it, lock it, drop it. I used to hate dancing behind shorties in that, because I could never figure out, like, are we actually dropping it, or, like, what are we doing right now? I put my fingers in the belt loops. You're not going nowhere. I I, say, it's I not where I thought his fingers were going. To, y'all just have to just stand there, you know, just be like a sturdy base. Yeah, but then it also looks stupid when Shorty go all the way down and you still just standing there sometimes. Is that considered dancing? What is? Just stint like... No, 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 you gotta like... Put, the, put some hips Yeah, you gotta, right? you know... I mean, yes, that would be helpful. I mean, if you have a waistline, but if you don't, then the best thing to do is just stand there and be a sturdy base. <laughs> I feel like that's kind of creepy. Get your shit played with by my butthole. But you know, <laughs> like, yeah. like I, bro, I, I low key feel like while this girl's going, well, okay, if you can't catch the rhythm of how she's moving and you also don't have a waistline, there's really no any more options besides just stand. Well, not standing there, but like you know, just kind of like if you're against a wall, make it seem like you're doing something. Yo, but I haven't danced on a girl in so long. I wonder if I still know how to dance. Mm. Like, I used to get it. Yeah, it's like, even going out now, it's so interesting. Not to mention, like, the most I go out to is up to Russell. Um, so, like, if I see someone, you got to be really intentional. Like, you got to disrupt their dinner party. <laughs> Introduce <laughs> yourself. Screaming, not disrupt their dinner try party. to make shit appealing. Yeah, it's different. Somebody should buy and open a club. They um, still throwing people. Downstairs <laughs> at the restaurant. <laughs> um, apparently, they like revamped the whole shit inside. Oh, I mean, you know, and changed the name. Oh, I didn't hear that. What is it? Just the lady now? It's just the Russian. Hmm. Interesting. The Russian. 
No, 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 no. Russian lady. The, the place that throws people. Oh. Yeah. So, question of the day, folks. Oh, snap. Let me paint a picture for y'all, and we gonna dive into this. I was having a conversation with my homie earlier, right? And his shorty went on an all-girls Oh, vac- this is a real example. Yeah. That's why I was... Oh, I thought you saw this online. No, that's no, why that's Ash. Why I oh, thought I, because I saw something similar online. So oh, I was like, I "Oh, is wait. it the thing with the thing?" And yeah. he's like, "No." I actually, yeah, I actually had no idea but what I was she was what referencing. I saw yeah. After he says the story, though. So I was talking to my homeboy earlier. His shorty went on an all girls trip. Okay. How many girls? Four of them. <laughs> I make that number. Right, go. <laughs> so four of them went on a trip. Um, they're somewhere warm, tropical, right? So they're on the beach, they're at a resort, they're at the pool, whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. And my homie was like, bro, like, I'm not insecure and, like, I'm not trying to, like, ruin her trip. You know, I'm trying to let her breathe. And I see that she's active on social media. Like, she's posting to her story and yada, 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 whatever. But she's not sending no snaps to me. Or or very minimal snaps. She got an iPhone? Yes. Uh, Right? So he says she's sending minimal snaps to me, right? No, like, hey, I'm getting ready snaps. No, like, pictures by the pool with her ass <coughs> out. Like, no, you know, flirtatious or nothing snaps. And then he asked me, do I have the right to feel a type of way? Where is she? South America. Oh, that's right. That's right. right. <clears throat> she's on a resort. Okay, with her four homegirls. Three homegirls. She's the fourth. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. All okay. inclusive. All inclusive, drinks again, poor, booties out, titties out, and he's all feeling that. Some type of way At a resort, he's not communicating with him throughout the day, but he's active. On and it's spring media. break. It's it's spring break, but I don't even think it's the fact that is communicating throughout the day because like go go do your thing, like go have your fun, right? But like if you in that sexy ass bathing suit, like send me a picture. She of tough. You. I'm not, my bad. That's your point. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. (laughs) She's two. Respect. She's an attractive woman. Like I don't think this girl's bad, but she like she not him. Thought you was called an ugly joke. Straight one. Got it. I'm gonna let. I'm gonna let. Chivalry's not dead. Ash, what do you think? Mm. All right, Mister Strike Two. (laughs) Um. Okay, so just to get. Again, full clarity. So he's not upset because she's not communicating throughout the day. Correct. He's just feeling some type of way because she's posting pictures on her social media. Like, she's media. active. She's active. But, she's he, but he's not receiving any of those pictures. He's not receiving no love. Okay, so. He's not he receiving wants, any love. He wants the pictures. The he wants some love. Like, bro. They together? Mm-hmm. How long have they been together? I was just gonna close, close to a year. Like they, 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 they've been. They at the honeymoon stage. A year is still the honeymoon stage. Yeah. yeah. Folks are delusional. You're still okay. So <laughs> even, okay. <laughs> so tell it's true, true. So even if you're still in the honeymoon phase, you would think like, oh, I'm still thinking about this man. Let me send him this fine ass. Hey, listen. I mean, everybody's different. Everybody's different. Right. What you mean? Go elaborate on that. Right. So I think I understand where he's feeling some type of way because. Yeah, it's like, oh, well, you know, in that same instance, you tapping away at your phone to send this to Instagram, send this to Snapchat, like, boop, boop, just drop it in our text chat or send me a snap, too, if we're on, like, social medias together. Um, So I understand that. I think that would just be a question to maybe say, like, so. I mean, he could also do it, like, really funny in, not funny, but. You know, just kind of played off like, so am I gonna get a picture? Yeah, but then or Shorty like, would turn around and be like, "Why are you being so like?" But I mean, if they're already used to like sending each other pictures and stuff like that, I don't think that's the weirdest thing for her to be like. So, like, why are you pressing me for a picture, or why do you feel like I'm gonna send you a picture on this trip? Like, if y'all are together, obviously y'all send each other pictures, right? Whether they're like you know risque pictures or just like regular day to day pictures or whatever the case is, so it's like. Why are you being weird? Now that you on vacation. Now that you on vacation, I'm not getting a picture. But then also she shouldn't be like, well, why do you want a picture for? Like, mm, I don't know if I should send you a picture now because you feel like you're mm-hmm. pressing me for a picture. I don't know this person, objectively speaking. So there's no niggas on this trip with them. Nah, just the niggas that's at the resort. 
Are or her, like are her friends the single? Everybody's on the trip is single. She's um, getting dog, bro. That's wild. <laughs> hey, yo. That's wild. Bro, I wasn't trying to go there, but bro, let, you listen. Go there. And if and if I if we've met like through you know circles with Jacob, like, nah, the, um, these are college friends. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah you've you've I never mean, met homie. I think the that. possibility of her actually getting dogged out is high. Not as high as I would say, like, oh, yeah, she's definitely getting, like... She, I mean, the thing Getting is, some on this trip, but... Th- what if it's a sign that she really just don't fuck with him? And and she's enjoying her peace. And, and he don't bring it. You know, like, <laughs> like listen, I'm, I'm on... I'm on this trip. I'm with my girls. I'm in a good, like, you know what I mean? And... Yeah, because if you want a resort... And your ass is out, and, and your man getting, can't see it. And I ain't getting no nudes. Like, what you mean? Like, first of all, if you posted like I just like uh, observing women. I know that she spent a lot of time in that fucking hotel mirror, putting all Bro. her shit on. And, and, and I know pictures were taken. I know they were taken. Who was they sent to? Because I ain't getting none. She listen. And and, and 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 having this conversation with my boy, I literally said everything you just said. <laughs> But I didn't want to put that in his mind, like, yo, he, she's, she's already, sending these to another nigga. He's already thinking it. She's so for might the as well streets, just, bro. Like, talk about it. What ethnicity is she? Puerto Rican. Okay. Not Puerto Rican. I look that not the same, Robert. But yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, man, they crazy. I, I think. How long was this trip planned? Months. Okay. A girl's only spring break trip. That we're not having, like, and you don't gotta talk to me all the time. Because my thing, my big thing too about vacations, like, enjoy your vacation. Like, right, we don't have to talk all the time. But if you're no. taking the time to be active on social media, and I'm not getting any, like, it's the exclusivity for me. Like, I should I be getting think, some like, shit that it shouldn't even. Social- well, exclusivity, yes, but I think also too, like, it doesn't have to always be those type of like post either it could just really be like oh hey like we did this today or like hey we did that today too like it could be a combination of both mm-hmm. but she's not doing anything do you at have all. her on instagram nah oh, okay i was gonna tell you to send it i was like i need to see what's being posted because if she's posted like bathing suit pictures or like feet up chilling with out and like i'm not getting nothing like the fuck like i understand wi-fi but you're on the resort so like and i also understand you're on vacation you want to enjoy it but like bro show me yeah. some love Either that or, like, do what the real ones do and save all those videos and pictures for after vacation. That's what I was going to say, too, back to my earlier point. I'm just like, maybe also, on the other side of it, maybe she is saving all of the pictures and then whatever the case is is just not sending them because she's getting too lit and too turned. However, however... Uh-uh. Are those considered recycled nudes? Like, if it's... So if I took a nude... Tuesday on the resort, mm-hmm. and then I didn't send it to you till Wednesday. No, 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 no. But what? Let's what, say like Friday, like when you. Oh, like a few days after the yeah. fact. But I here's my thing: if you took that nude on Tuesday, why was it sitting there till Friday? <laughs> Just well, I was gonna say too. I was like, huh? Like, <laughs> you, you know, it, nah. I want that nude <laughs> <laughs> near immediately. immediately. Like, what is that shit? Expeditiously. You had to send it to seven other niggas to see if they liked it first. Yeah. I, I don't know. I it um. I definitely. I think. I just want to know if it's gonna if the tables were flipped, would it be the same energy? But I don't think niggas post as much. I guess if the tables were flipped, regardless of niggas not posting so much, like if he was on a trip with his boys, and she was like, you know how he's feeling, and he didn't post nothing, or not post like he didn't send her anything, but he posted everywhere, right? It's like, oh, you're not gonna send me an outfit pic. Like, you're not gonna send me a little skate pic. Nothing. That's why. Got it. Well, very insightful, very interesting. Um, appreciate the uh, thought processes, right? <laughs> um, processes. And in in <laughs> scheduling or planning today's episode, I thought it'd be fun to just talk about some current events. Some Wait, things. hold on, my bad. What did we come to? She for the streets. I feel like she on her way there. She also just might not like. I think she don't like the nigga as much as she claims. Or 
maybe too if she's feeling like well i don't want to be like the only one all lovey-dovey up in my phone with my nigga if like my single friends ain't got but i'm sure that the single friends got hoes I'm Look, sure the single yeah, friends. Yeah, but not like you don't, bro. You could send a mirror pic before you even leave the room. Well, that's what I said. Like the like, same way she you not posting, sending nothing. You could easily just boop send it over. You There's, not sending nothing. Listen, three of you. You're the you're the bottom twenty five percent of your friend group on this vacation, locked up, and everyone else is single. There's fucking going on, bro. I'm telling you. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> not there's fucking going on. Like, not there's fucking going there's on. fucking going on. I'm sorry to say it, but hey, man. Might delete later. Hey, yo. <laughs> We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. So I don't, I don't even know where to start. I think it'd be cool once a month to just do a little current event uh, conversation. I should probably get my foot off this table before we get fired and shit. Um, <laughs> so the first current event that is going on right now that I think is very interesting, controversial or not, do not cancel us per this next segment of the conversation. The NAIA national association of intercollegiate athletics. So they are a, another conference that is like parallel to the NCAA, mm-hmm. right? Um, a lot of international students go through there. A lot of students, um, who struggle with grades and things like that go to the NAIA because their uh, parameters and restrictions are a little looser, right? And they can give certain scholarships uh, a little more freely. Um, So that's what the NAIA is. They just ruled that transgender athletes cannot compete in their change gender sports. So it bans transgender athletes from competing with women. So if I go and have a sex change, right? Mm -hmm. I cannot compete as a woman. However, all athletes may perform in men's sports, but not women's. So if a woman transitions to a man, they are now allowed to compete as a man. But if a man competes, I mean, transitions to a woman, he is not allowed to compete. Was I clear with that? I know it's, it's, I know y'all just processing. I just want to make sure. I was clear. Yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to process. And so my point of view on this, um, I low key agree to the aspect of if you are a man transitioning to a woman, right? Yeah. Biologically already, you are a step ahead, Mm -hmm. right? So Mm -hmm. there was a UFC fighter who was a man in transition to a woman, and she was beating the bricks off of people. <laughs> beating fair. That's not that's fair. Crazy, yeah. It's crazy, I'm sorry it's not fair. Right. There was, I believe, a man, if I'm not mistaken, he, he might have been in high school or college, I don't remember, mm-hmm. transitioned to a woman in track and was blowing everybody out of the fucking water. Kind of like um, homegirl, homeboy girl, um, who, <laughs> did, who did the swimming. <laughs> I, I please elaborate. The swimming, the, the the dude who like he was trash in male swimming. He transitioned to women's swimming. And just blew everything. I didn't hear about that. Oh, I know who you're For talking real? about. The name escapes me, but I do remember I, hearing. I that. can't forget how he looked because he looked like Michael Phelps with long hair. <laughs> but it was it was like, well, yeah, that's not fair. He was like. St- it was like me standing next to Ash, like of who his competition was. Like, bro, this is crazy. Yeah, that's. So, so that's my thought. Yeah. P- part of me, my initial thought is like, I agree with that. Because again, like imagine if LeBron had a sex change and just decided to play in the WNBA for the next 20 years. Like that would be why <laughs> it's just like, you know what? I'm not giving this shit up. Um, but also part of me is like, I don't know if you go through with the full procedure. I feel like uh, you kind of, you kind of fake stamped, you know, like. Cause uh, it's not a cheap procedure. It's like 200, 200 plus. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and your insurance too doesn't really cover. Like <sighs> it, the insurance are now starting to cover some things, but they're not covering everything. I just don't know the biology enough. Like after the procedure, like how much the hormones and everything like affect you, and like how much. But it's just like again, you would still have to be on like. I mean, again, I too <coughs> don't know the full scope, but just from like talking to people. Um, and understanding like their journey and those things, some people have said like they have stuck on certain hormones, whatever right. they 
um, decided to transition to um, for a little bit after the fact just to kind of help because like again too like your body is still going through a lot of different changes so they still need help kind of balancing everything out before you're like fully either not on it anymore or maybe have to still stay on it for like the rest of your life depending on where you're at where you, yeah. or what you decide to do but um so all three of us said one word that or one phrase that um kind of I think highlights this whole thing that's not fair right so what exactly is fair you know because like you could be the smartest person in the room doesn't mean you're always going to get that opportunity Who is that fair is it not you get what I'm saying so like yeah how do you really define fairness then like life's not fair I I just feel like we were talking about this we were talking about this earlier just basketball like the rules of things have changed and transitioned so much. Like, I feel like certain things are getting watered down, you know? They for sure are. So, like, to just... I think if this is going to be a growing thing, there should be a specific league or I was going to go there with it, yep. For that. So, like, all right, if y'all... If, like, there's going to be this inclusive factor, like, let's just throw everyone in that part, but you have to, like... To change, like, to say you want to change the NBA and the WNBA and, like, all right, people could just, like, go back and forth. Like, I just think that would that would saturate and water down the whole sport aspect. But, again, if someone wanted to create that lane, like, instead of the big three, it's the <coughs> <laughs> different part. I, I think that's where it has to go, right? Like, because we, we are inclusive, we are accepting of everyone, size, shape, color, you know, gender, wh- whatever you – identify as like if we really want this to be quote unquote fair you got to create that lane for those who like are choosing to all right i am this gender or whatever right and this is where we are and then the people that are that transition to be like okay now this is fair for us you know what i mean like now we're all on the evil even playing field and they're on the even playing field and one doesn't have to do anything with the other right so I mean, they're already trying to change so much. Um, I feel like already, when, even when it just comes to, like, the WNBA, and that alone, I feel like, is hindering women as athletes just being great and doing great things and making history for themselves and for other women that want to, like, end up in the league. So, I agree. I think for fairness, it is subjective, but I think anyone who is, like, genuinely trying to be fair... Their overall, I, I think, goal is to just make sure that everyone is able to benefit. And not to mention, refs are bad enough these days. Like, <laughs> let's not make their job any harder. Child. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't get me started. Brian might throw the camera at me. <laughs> um, She's the goat! <laughs> <laughs> so switching... It was uh, a soft screen! <laughs> <laughs> the feet weren't moving! <laughs> she sold it! Um... <laughs> So to to switch uh, lanes a little bit, right, Jermaine? I was say no pun intended. Um, Nobody's gonna say Cole. My bad. Y'all stink. So Cole. the greatest rapper alive mm. um, dropped a album tape uh, a week ago yeah. called "Might Delete Later." Just a surprise, too. Right. I saw someone post on. Facebook, I was like, no way. And I go on Spotify, I'm like, okay, I was like, ooh. I guess I'm not going to bed for an hour. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, know, I saved it to listen to this weekend. So you still haven't listened to it? It was too many things going on for me these last couple of weeks. That's I was fair. like, it's the fair weekend I have. I'm just going to sit down and vibe. I listened to it at 12.33 that morning. Bro, like, I, I li- by 7 a.m. the following morning, I had already listened to it three times. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, <coughs> however. It's a quick read. We all know... Uh, <laughs> Kung Fu Kenny, Kendrick Lamar, yeah. K-Dot, the second greatest rapper alive, uh, took shots at J. Cole on his uh, feature with Metro Boomin' and Future's track, yada, yada, whatever, right? Yeah. Cole then responded with this album, mm-hmm. and there's like two or three songs that he takes like a couple shots, mm-hmm. but then in his... He just addresses it at the end. Yeah, then he drops the last song, is, is, what is it called, Seven Minute... Um, Warm up. Seven minute drill, drill right? Yeah. It's just a full on assault of it Kendrick. was a it was a warning. It was, it, a, it was a warning, yes, warning shots. Yeah. But then this past weekend mm-hmm. at 
his Dreamville Fest. Three days later. Three days later, he issues a public apology and says oh. the 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 shots didn't sit well with my spirit. I'm taking it off streaming devices. Like, how can I sit here and bash? Hey, I can't even listen to it now. It's still on. Oh, okay. it's still up there. But how can I stand on business on something I really don't truly believe in? Mean, right? So and then proceeded to get the crowd to also address that they like Kendrick Lamar, like that he's a great rapper. Right. Um, and how Interesting. Yeah. So do y'all feel like that was genuinely him doing that? Or do you feel like that was some of his like marketing team saying like, you know, let's keep you in the good graces mm -hmm. on all that kind of jazz stuff. Nah. I, so me as the biggest Cole fan you're ever going to meet. Um, yo, Jermaine, come on the show. Man, it gets 43.4 million monthly listeners on Spotify. How about that? That's all good. So, the the rapper, the hip-hop rap fan in me, right, mm -hmm. is like, bro, you could have just left that out there, right, and right. called Kendrick. Because when Kendrick dropped the control verse that he dissed everybody all those years ago, mm -hmm. Cole said in an interview that when he heard it, he immediately got on the phone and was like, Yo, like, you coming at me? Or is this, like, for sport? And Kendrick was like, nah, like, you know, it's just for sport. You know, I'm just throwing my name out there. And he was like, all right, cool, because I just wanted to see how I had to, you know, yeah, retaliate. Yeah. And Cole then dropped his quick little verse, got mm -hmm. back, and, like, that was the end of it. So if he really didn't like Kendrick coming at Cole, at him, right. he could just hit him like, yo, like, what kind of time we on? And then that could have dictated it. However... The beef's not even with Cole. The beef is with that other light skinned sorry nigga, Aubrey, <laughs> who still hasn't responded, right? Probably and won't. and Cole caught the strays. You know what I mean? Okay, all right. So I listened to the Joe Budden podcast about this. This is the only reason why I listen to the Joe Budden podcast because when they start talking about music, I'd be intrigued to hear what them niggas gotta say. So, the beef is actually deeper than that. Like, they've been taking shots, subtle shots at each other. For Kendrick like, and, and Drake? Kendrick and Cole have been taking shots at each other for a while. But they've agreed. They've both said that it's just competition. Right. Like, it's, it's not like an actual beef. It, mm -hmm. So, th this is why I like Cole, because, <laughs> because, like a fellow Aquarius, someone came with smoke, and he was just like, like, I got time today. <laughs> you, know what? you know what? Like, I, let me check my calendar. I, you know what? I actually do have fucking it's time. Hold Catch this, this heat. Hold this real quick. Because, like, even listening to it, as far as a diss track, because it's a warning, as far as a diss track, it's definitely light. But when you hear it coming from Cole, it's so out of character. Mm -hmm. You're just like, yo. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, he didn't, he didn't, not one lie was told on the track. I think there he, was one. It, it was what? When he said, uh, you played out like The Simpsons, my nigga, The Simpsons been running for like 30 years. But who still watches The Simpsons? Oh, I don't know. Exactly. Well, I guess. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the... My fault. <laughs> oh, damn. <clears throat> so, like, the, the thing I liked about it is, like, not one lie was told, but also I understand, and I think because we live in such a time, Toxic generation of like we want beef and controversy. Mm -hmm. it so they can't resonate with someone who's like operating at a higher frequency. Being like, you know what? That was the old me that responded because I felt like, yo, we've been cool. Yeah, this has been playful. Ha ha. This down the third. I told you, like I tell everybody, we top three. Yeah, I'm Ali of this shit, but I'm supposed to feel like that. And then obviously it's Kendrick. He's just like, nah, nigga, like, fuck y'all niggas. I'm the top. Like, I'm which, Tyson. Which is respectable. Right, right, right. right. And Cole's just like, listen, if you really want to do this, I saw what you did. I'm going to give you one chance to opt out. And then he's like, you know what? I'm going to peacefully bow out. I ain't mad at it, personally. I know a lot of people, a lot of the younger generations mad at it that I've noticed. People in, like, grades younger than us, I see responding on Facebook and Instagram, like, oh, Cole Soft, this, that, and the third. Like, nah, how you going to apologize after blah, 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 this, that, and the third? And I'm just like, I mean, that's that's kind of what you, if that's how you feel, like. So here's, I, if I was him, I wouldn't apologize. I would have had a behind doors conversation. But if I was Cole, this is what I would have done, right? <laughs> this is what Carrington wanted. My bad. Oh, my bad. <laughs> You can, can you use I, the public hmm? apology? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nah. 
If I'm cold, <laughs> this is what I do, right? Because okay. the beef is really between Drake and Kendrick, and he's like the middleman, right? If mm. I'm cold, I then call Kendrick and say, bro, since I'm I'm really in the middle of this and I'm really the GOAT, now you and I, let's drop a song together, right? So that it shows that he's not picking he's songs. He's on tour with Drake right now. Yeah. But Kendrick not getting no money, bro. Like, who like who you aligning with, the lyricist or the bread? So then why apologize? But but again, because it, I, didn't it, it didn't sit right with it. And that's, right. and that's why I'm okay with it. But instead, I would have then made a song with Kendrick, and then that would have been the apology in itself. The, the thing is, I think looking big picture, they're going to go hit for hit for a while. Like, they're going to go blow for blow if it's really going to be that. You know what I'm saying? This nigga said he could drop two. I, f- I fully believe. I don't know what Kendrick been doing. I fully believe Cole really just has some shit that he's just been sitting on, too. Facts. Like, if he wanted to just drop, like, some shit, like, yeah. Bro, like, nigga, I just do this. Like, I do this all the time. Feel me? Um, even, like, the last couple of years, he keeps hopping on records with people and annihilating them. That's what he said. How many uh, verses of the year is Cole going to write? I feel you. He's been annihilating people. So, it's so like, you cool with the apology? I'm cool with it. I I think it shows a level of maturity people aren't accustomed to seeing because people in this generation want to see controversy and toxicity. I I agree. To, I and and people. I'm want not saying violence. I would apologize because y'all know. <laughs> like, y'all know what it's smoking. Like, I'm sorry you feel that way. Exactly. Yeah, that's the most. <laughs> I'm sorry you came at say. me. The fuck. But yeah, no. Like, like I'm sorry that. Your that that mood. that that takes a lot. Um, and the thing is, he's still gonna drop another album this year, and niggas are still gonna listen to it. Like, Facts, because people who fuck with Cole just like fuck. You with Cole. you can't like people were trying to say that um, <coughs> he had a line on there that was basically calling Kendrick a, tra- a transgender, and um, not the Tessa. <laughs> <laughs> and and basically they were like, oh, the LGBTQ plus community is gonna try and cancel him, and what? they were like, bro, there's there's no canceling Cole. What line is it? It it's the song that he has with, um, uh, I believe with like Ab Soul in them, and he says son about like he's referencing uh, his last album, and he said some some this nigga's more transgender than blah 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 something like that. Uh, um, what do you think about the whole album? So when I my first listen, I said, what the fuck was this? My first listen was like, Cole needs no features anymore. <laughs> I, except the one with the, the, the UK guy was fire. Um, the hide your bitch, hide your wife. Yeah, 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 that yeah, shit's yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so my first listen was like, yo, this what is this? But then my second listen, my, I was talking to my brother. He was like, you got to go into it with a mixtape ear, mm-hmm. not an album ear. Mm-hmm. And when I did that, I said, oh, no, nah, this shit's hard. And this is probably the first album that grew on me. Every okay. other album of was Cole, immediate. I listened, I said, nah, this shit. Because there's a story being told. Right. Whereas this, it was just like different songs, but I'm like, oh, wait. Oh, nah, this shit's hard. And he did it. What was like a weak response? Yeah. some And, and, and Aubrey <laughs> still ain't respond. He posted some corny shit to his IG, but. The thing is. Drake's writers are probably retiring on vacation. Like, hey, yo. Like, they probably live in a good life Not right retiring. now. Like, like what, what, what more? He to- said, God damn it, Drake. <laughs> you getting us in some shit again. Come on. First Pusha, then Meek. <laughs> Right. It's like I'm trying to cash my 401k now. And there's a difference. So I like how, I like how they broke it down on the Joe Budden podcast. They're basically saying that. Drake is the best Drake. performing like <laughs> artist, right? Of our time. He's the best commercial artist He's of this the generation. He's the best commercial artist. I've been said that. Cole best um we said like lyricist and like rapper, right? And then he's like Kendrick is the best artist. Like he's mm. making art. This is going to be abstract. This is going to be me, like my art, and I'm going to share it with the world type shit. So Charlemagne said it best. He said that, uh, not everybody's saying it best. Um, He said Kendrick is the type of artist that you appreciate later. Mm. Uh, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, right? If you're not a Kendrick fan and if you're not a conscious rapper fan, Mm -hmm. you're not going to appreciate that till later. To Pimp a Butterfly was very Mm. socially powered and things like that right mm. if you weren't with that movement and, and didn't listen to that you're gonna appreciate that later like you can appreciate what about damn 
he said that was the only album that he really didn't like okay. of of Kendrick, um, and or whatever. But he said a lot of Kendrick shit is timeless. You're gonna mm. en- enjoy it in the moment, right. but if you don't really like it, you'll appreciate it later. My only thing with Kendrick is like because he's more of a West Coast rapper, that style of rap is harder to digest than East Coast rap for me. It's harder to listen to for me. Yeah, like even his voice. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be like, <laughs> but again, like that—that's his thing. It's his art, yeah. and and, and well, yeah, I agree with like the acquired taste, but I think that's like a lot of different artists that we have nowadays. They're just an acquired taste, where it's like if people don't rock with them now, they may never, or they might later. But again, I think everyone's in their respective lane, just doing their thing. Yeah, that's why I think Cole felt bad for um. Cause to be honest, I was listening. I I listened to that on repeat for a while. I was just like the seven minute drill. Yeah, it's my I shit. like the second beat better than the first one. Nah, the first beat goes crazy. What? Nah, I I feel like if we would have got four minutes of that second beat, Cole would have snapped. See, you know it's funny when it shifts. I'm just like. I I appreciate the second beat, but the first beat to me, I'm like, it's too fast and like, yeah, because Ash just, is like, I have nothing to say. I haven't like, I haven't listened. I'm just, I'm just taking notes. It's just what um, I need to listen for when I, I go listen to it. I'm always intrigued about how Cole creates his records. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. he, I do appreciate his style of like artistry and yeah. how he like just compiles things and together. He, pro- he be producing most of it himself now too. So Facts. Like, that's why he's just like, oh, you said something, but I got you. Um, and he'll and, and and even it's and we spoke about this before, but taking it back to the little Yachty interview, right? Yeah, this man. Low key, like took over the interview, but he gave Lil Yachty his flowers while also telling Lil Yachty, "You're not as good as me." While telling Lil you're Yachty, in a different lane. "Yeah, you're yeah. in a different lane." Yeah. Yeah. While saying, "Like I'm the best, and I know it." Right. With without like disrespecting or directly like. Yeah, he you knows know? how to like professionally like keep somebody in check, but exactly. still like throw a bit of that shade and be like. And and I feel like if anybody were to go toe to toe with him, sure. it'd have to be Kendrick. Yeah, I just don't. But think I, I I don't see it ever happening. I don't think another thing that these niggas said like I just to I know Cole behind closed doors with like Hove and like all, all the rappers like went toe to toe and like was like uh, a battle rapper type shit. But like mm-hmm. I think commercially it's just like. I'm like, because all he did was bring light to Kendrick. So now Kendrick has the opportunity. If Kendrick doesn't drop an album within the next six months, he oh lo- he's not going to he bro. Then he literally lost like the momentum that he could ride off on. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing. I don't think Kendrick cares. I don't think he cares. He's just doing his thing. Yeah, like he bro. He's the only artist of our generation with a a Nobel Peace Prize for his music. Hey, yo. You get what I'm saying? Like, Is he the next Wale? Because Wale just fell Did off. Did you say the... Oh. Well, Wale got beef with Meek Mill now. What? Wale, yeah. Wale, Wale still makes music? Well, well, Meek Mill says something. He yeah. gonna stretch him out or some shit. And no, Diddy. Whoa! And that was and that's what folks were saying. How you beefing wow. with Wale, but you never addressed the Diddy allegations. Oop. There it is. Hey. People still waiting for that response. Hey, would y'all like Last to- bit of current events, and this is going to be interesting where this goes. Remy Carter, Rummy Carter, one of the twins of the Beyonce and Jay-Z, mm-hmm. is now the youngest female artist on Billboard Top 100 with being featured on Beyonce's new album, Cowboy Carter. What did she do? Um, Same thing she did with Blue Ivy on the Lion King album. Just like something like in the... the End of the song or beginning of the song, like she was speaking, singing on it or whatever. But she's um, credited on the song. Okay. Right. How do you guys feel? Uh, one, how do y'all feel about that? But two, how do you guys feel about like celebrities or parents putting their kids in the limelight at such an early place? Because Drake did it with Adonis. Um, Kanye did it with um, North on the last album on Vultures One. Mm-hmm. So. A lot of folks have done this. What do you guys think about them putting their kids in a in the spotlight so early? Oh, that's for me. I mean, right. either of us could go first. I don't mind. Oh, um, I think at least for like Beyonce, I feel like how she did it with Blue, she did it in a way where 
there was still that sense of protection over mm. her child and not allowing just access. Yeah, access or just allowing the just vultures of society and just cameras and everything and all that really get to them and really stain their childhood of them still being a child. I think for them, that's their way of kind of like bonding with their children of like sharing this great passion that they have with right. them. Um, like, you know, I really love music. Like this is my art and I want to share this with you and, you know, not, I don't know if that's something like, you know, they would want their legacy to continue in that same field. But, um, I mean, I think it's cool. I think it's a way, the same way, like, us, you know, regular degler folk, we, <laughs> that don't have such, like, a high. Us peasants. Right, us peasants <laughs> down here. Um, you know, we would want to, like, share our different type of arts or, like, our just different hobbies with our own kids one day. You know, that's what's saying that they do at their level. It's just um, on a bigger. Yeah, it's just on a bigger scale because, right. like, there's cameras and there's lives. Like, people are, like, literally talking about their lives every single day. Um, but I think with that, though, with the platform that they do have and being a parent, I think they still have to remember that they're a parent first mm. before their platform. So I think that there still should be that sense of protection over their kids and not allowing society to try to like dictate their kids or dictate what they should do with their kids or uh, making it seem, you know, like, Oh, like when are you going to throw them on the next album? Or like, you know, they should do this or they should do that. It's like, no, like, it's no pressure. Like, like there's this, no pressure yeah, to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, I just wanted to share this one moment with my child. Or, um, you know, I just wanted to share this on my album. I think to also help remind us folk that, you know, they're still human too. Mm -hmm. Like, they have families. They have lives. You know, they still aspire and dream to do a lot of different things that we do too at our level. Um, and I think people forget that sometimes. They forget that, you know, they still bleed the same they're blood human, we do. Yeah. yeah, it's just like... You know, even just watching, um, I don't know if you all watched the Renaissance documentary that Beyonce had out, but I always appreciate <laughs> um, when Beyonce has done that, even for like her last like tours that she had too, because I think it does help give people a nice perspective of like, oh, you know, Beyonce is normal. Like, you know, she gets hurt. You know, she still has feelings. She still does all the things that we do, too. Mm -hmm. um, although she is also at, like, the top of her, like, area and just really killing it in the music game and being, like, this great model figure for all black women right. that want to, like, aspire to do those things, too. Um, and she still is an awesome performer. You know, she dances. She can sing really well and put on a really great concert and those things. So... Um, I liked it a lot the same way kind of like how you appreciated how Jermaine kind of compels all of his things and you see like how he kind of makes his music come to life I appreciate that like how Beyonce does that for her stuff too um, but I don't know I think it's one of those things too where it's like some people could say like oh like don't get your kids wrapped up in all that stuff and let them be like kids and you know when they're older maybe they can decide if they want to like do something like that for themselves and not you trying to like put your own thing onto them. Mm -hmm. And I think to that point, it's interesting because like by default, these kids are going to be indulged in this, right? Well, like whether they want to or right, not. Right. Cause like, you know, paparazzi's everywhere. So like right. they're going to be in the pictures, like people are going to be harassing them. Even again, they didn't ask for it, but it's like, if you're with your mom and your mom is Beyonce, right? Like you're going to um, be in all these photos. Unless you live that J Cole level of secrecy. Right. He has kids and nobody even knows what they look like. Right. And I mean, like, Beyonce did that with the twins right. at first originally, like mm -hmm. she did keep them very sheltered, which I respect her for it because these people are crazy. Right. Let your kids be kids. I'm glad Ashley answered that first. Because. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, it's stupid. <laughs> no, I like, I think. Because I, that was like the. That was like the right brain version of it. Right. Like me, I was just thinking like the business side. I'm like, this is genius. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> like it's the best of both. Right. Because Jay-Z said a while ago, he's like, yo, I buy a piece of art right now for mm -hmm. two million. Over 30 years, it's going to be worth 8, 20, 30 mm -hmm. million. It's the same thing with music. So, like, you just make, created something that, because Beyonce, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't, like, I hear Beyonce's music on the radio. <laughs> I've never listened to an album. Like, don't. 
You're not you're not alone. I was gonna say don't kill us, but like from like the impact he does have, like hearing Ashley talk about, it, like Ashley's not the only person who speaks of right. Dante like that, right? Um, so putting your child on something like that, which you're then just gotta think about, it, right? I don't know how like the compensation set up for these projects, but it's like she's got royalties now. She has royalties on this music that she's gonna be getting for. Ever. Right. And Beyonce makes timeless music. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, this is genius. Um, I think, I think on that regard, it's genius. I think a lot on what Ashley's saying, kind of forcing it upon him. Like, like even watching the Renaissance tour, that's the, her last tour that she went on with Blue. Mm -hmm. um, the first couple of shows, Blue was nervous. She was mm. like, do I even like doing this? This is kind of weird. Right, right. Yeah. At the end of it, she's like, nah, y'all fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, like, y'all was talking that hot shit. I'm, yeah. about to, I'm about to pop off. But I just, like, I always wonder, like, is that actually something that she wants to do? Mm. Or is that something that this is kind of the family business? Right, right. or does she My feel almost like, like that anonymous pressure of, like, I have compelled myself now to get into this because like my mom is doing follow in it these footsteps. my I, dad's also like big in the music game yeah but like i showed up to breakfast and it's just bad bad goats like they got a farm like, <laughs> i mean what? i would not be surprised if beyonce and jay-z got some like Both? black farm agricultural thing going <laughs> on on I'm the saying. side job like it probably is coming up soon man to, like if she said she wanted to play professional basketball it'd be like what you know northwest is actually good as hell at basketball for real and, oh, and, oh i saw and her and wilson was trying to plug beyonce and was trying to tell her like come on now get you a team yeah, I, I saw that. I saw that. I mean, I feel like she might as well. She might as well get herself a team. Or, or she could or she could take the Jay Z route, sit on the chair and basically run the league. Cause I mean, that's true too. Yeah, like what I was thinking about I, I always when I think of Jay Z and I think of the moves he makes, like he's been telling niggas forever. Like I'm not a businessman. I'm, I'm a, a businessman. Business like yeah. right. what? So People wasn't so, listening. They so wasn't listening. To to Kanye either, because he told niggas. <laughs> <laughs> no diddy. Um so to your point about um, you know, like forcing it on the kids like one of my biggest fears like when i become a parent is like like right now i forcing coach soccer onto them. yes mm. and and like now That's i true. coach and i what can they like play football as yeah, long as football. they don't want to play baseball i'm cool you're bugging what's wrong it's, with baseball it's boring bugging. so i understand that it is lucrative and yeah. there's a lot of money say, in like, it huh? and the and the the careers last forever. I get all that, mm -hmm. but whatever my kid, if my kid wants to be a scientist, if he wants to be a chess player, it, whatever he wants to do, I am gonna like invest in it, learn right. this to like help them out. Yeah, yeah. right. I don't want to have to learn about baseball. You rather learn about chess than baseball? I mean, have you, you been to a baseball what about game? I, so that I'll go to any almost any live sporting event and enjoy myself. I've gone to hockey games and had the time of my life. But you haven't gone to baseball. You just no, I, I have. So oh, like I've I've had fun. Don't. But is the difference between MLB and the getting goats. there? Yeah, you know what <laughs> I mean. And like going to my kids' game at nine years old, yeah, is not really going to be enjoyable. I, I think you know what it is. I think the difference is going to be because you're thinking of it as a like for you situation. You're going to be happy if your kids that happy. that kids happy. No, yeah. a thousand percent. I just hope he doesn't pick baseball or she. Softball, like that's you know all I'm what? saying. I feel like you already spoken into existence. We gonna find out years from now. <laughs> you be like these little niggas is playing baseball and softball. How I mean, to be honest, baseball has like transformed a lot. Like it's getting me. I don't know Dominican Holmes who just got an inside the park home run. Like that shit was nuts. Oh, yeah. That's the mm -hmm. name. Yeah, yeah nah. I and and they let them fight, so it's cool. Like, well, they don't let them fight, but they be fighting. Like, me, I don't me, know. but. Me. One thing I do that y'all both said that, like, resonated is, like, you know, the J's, the B's of the world, Kanye, like, they're doing this with their kids. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're not taking the Nickelodeon route where they're dropping their kids off and oh. letting only God knows what happens to their kids. And, like, I think the important side of it is they're using it to build a bond with their kid mm -hmm. and expose them as opposed to, like, hey, this kid's going to go make millions and – for our family, you know what I mean? Like, they're right. still protecting their their kids. I just wonder what the balance is of that. Because when I think of, like, when I think of Blue, when I think of North, 
ridiculous first names. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> um, like, I also think of Willow Smith, right? And she she, my hair back and forth. Right, and she was like, I don't want to fucking do this anymore and just shaved her shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's <laughs> like, it's like, because Will Smith, he talks about it a lot. Like, he wanted to be an active father because he didn't have one. His memoir is amazing, by the way. Is it? You finished it? I'm reading it. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Still. <laughs> it's, taking, it's taking some time. Listen, it's not a race. It's, it's cool. a journey. <laughs> right. Um, he is basically saying how, like, he wanted to be an active father. So he brought his kids with him everywhere. Like, he got, mm-hmm. like, the right homeschooling and things to, like, be active with that. So, yeah, I think, I don't know. I just... I think it's an interesting dynamic. Like, that's different for everybody. I like... Especially when you got money. Right. Like, there's certain, yeah. there's certain legacies and things I want to pass down to my kids. Like, what I told you I embarked on. Like, that's that's a bigger picture. You feel me? Um, but also, like, there's things about me that I don't want to pass down to my kids. Like, no, 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 be better. Be better. <laughs> 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 that part. <laughs> like, um, yeah, no, it's interesting. Word. Well, shit. I mean, that's all the current events. Go Huskies! Woo! That, I'm a modder. That, uh, go Wolf Dogs. Um, UConn. Huskies! UConn. Huskies! Oh, that's how Huskies. That goes? UConn! Woof. Um, Who's Morgan Fontaine? What? I don't know. She just followed us, though. Right. Um, she's a sports coach. Um, um. Don, oh, Auntie Don. Auntie Don, come oh, on the Auntie show. Don. She, Gucci down to the Don. Please she, come on the show. Dope. Do you know what I really fuck with? Please her come on the show. She did, right? Cried. In all her post <laughs> game cried. interviews, right? The first thing she did, and this was not for publicity, and I know people hated it. First thing she did was thank God. Oh, that's a fact. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? And, and she that's was like, like Y'all, y'all going, y'all not going to edit this out. No. Nope. Like they did to homie in the NFL, um, CJ Stroud. Oh, for right? real? Yeah, I think it was like NBC or something. Like, Crazy. There were clips of him. They were like, hey, like you just won your first playoff game, yada, 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 yada. How do you feel? And like, he was like, you know, firstly, thank God, right? So on Instagram and yeah. the social medias was like mm. the actual interview. Right. And they like did like the delay and like edited it out, right? That's crazy. But That's wild. I would be suing them immediately. Right. Like, Defamation of kids. And, and with her, it was like, nah, y'all gonna take this beautiful black successful woman, all that I am, and let me talk my shit on this platform. Her. And the first thing I'm gonna do is thank God. Right. And especially mm-hmm. not that God is controversial, but religion is. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And you know. Some folks would be like, oh, nah, I don't like this message. She's for it. No, she's thanking God. Like, right. Like, she, and I think that's where people, they just get so, like, they force themselves to be so uncomfortable when people start praising, like, their faith and their spirituality. But it's like, let them do that. Facts. Like, they're not trying to push nothing on you. Like, they're just taking their moment to celebrate whatever higher powers may be above right. them that they are, like, close and connected with. The same way, like, you do your own little thing. Like, just let everybody do their own thing. And especially Auntie Dawn. Man, come on the the podcast, I like the fact that she shouted out Caitlin Clark, too. Um, Especially because, yeah. Regardless of how you feel about Caitlin Clark, like, I respect that. He's like, all right, still going to pay homage to someone. I mean, she was exciting to watch. I ain't going to hold you. Like, that LSU game, for me, I was like, damn, she really like y'all. (laughs) <laughs> right now. Yeah. That was bad coaching. It, that it game was, was yo, terrible coaching. Watching, watch it. There was a point in the game where four LSU girls ran to the paint and left their entire arc just open. I was just like, what are y'all doing? Because UConn and uh, South Carolina really exposed Caitlin Clark. Really exposed her. Yeah. Yo, and and, and then Raven, granted, she still had great game like. Raven Jackson Johnson? Oh, yeah. Talk that shit. Talk that shit. What? Um, what? But yeah, you you bottled up. UConn <laughs> and and South Carolina really um, exposed her. And then somebody was like, and this is the last thing I'm gonna say about Caitlin Clark before y'all start calling me a hater because I saw a comment that was like, you got grown ass men hating on a 21 year old. No sports. Um, <laughs> she dropped 30 points in the in the championship. National championship loss, right? 18 of the first Wh- which somebody would say, "Oh my God, thirty points is great." She took twenty eight shots. Yeah, um, I'm I'm sorry. 
You the greatest scorer ever. You took 28 shots. You need to be dropping 50. South Carolina watched tape. And that's what Dawn, another thing that Coach that Dawn pocket. did. Revenge that. tour over. That. Coach Dawn, a lot of coaches don't do this. Give a lot. She gave credit to her coaching staff. After she thanked God, the first thing she said was the the coach that, uh, the, the scouting coach. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know his name. She gave that dude credit. For real? She, she said, uh, he did his job and evaluated the tape and delivered it to our girls in a way that they could understand it mm-hmm. and effectively carry it out. Well, yeah, no, they talked a lot about, you know, for her, she had to really pivot in her coaching style. Facts. And she had to coach a lot differently than what she's used to. And I think that just also talks to her just like versatility and just the amount of just skill and that power that she has to be able to be a good leader Mm -hmm. and be a good mentor and be a good coach. Like that's what I feel like coaching should be defined as being able to grow with your players, be able to adjust, be able to make sure that they are able to connect with you. Cause I think the stronger you have a bond with your team, the better they are going to play. Cause I'm telling you, auntie Don Gucci (laughs) down to the Don. Cool. Cool as ever could be. Girl didn't raise a finger. Girl didn't break a sweat. Like, homegirl just... She definitely was super chill the whole time. She was just walking back and forth. The only time I actually saw her get upset was... I forget what call that they, like, called a foul on one of her plays. And she was just like... Like, that was stupid. And I was like, she was like... That was also stupid, too. But it's like, that's what I'm talking about. Like... She don't get an all rah rah. Her players ain't flinched because she nah, ain't flinched. Yeah, but it's because she's she's instilling like you know you play the game. She's building humans because Ray has got that dog in her. Bro. <laughs> that part. Listen, <laughs> that part. Listen, hey, and I even like I liked Raven's interview, her post game interview, where she was like, "Yo, listen, revenge tour over, baby." Play for Dawn Staley is not easy. Like she was really hard on me, but we all love her and appreciate right. her. Right. Yeah. Thanks. Like. That's the type of coaching you need. I think that's right. that's the type of coaching that this generation can't like can't get with because they think no. they, they think that Kobe and LeBron literally probably practice 20, 30 hours a week. Like they think that they really don't go to work and get shit done. Right. They're like, mm-hmm. no, no, no. They're just, it's God giving gifts. They just show right, up. They just literally nah. were born that way. And then when they got the opportunity to actually start yeah. playing ball, it's like, boom. No, like they everything were just clicked tough and they put in the work. Like, I don't know. I mean, you're a coach. You, you already know. But like a lot of my boys who coach different sports, they're just like, yo, these kids are soft. Like, Bro, my, my college coach said it best. He said, my job is not to get you to like me. My job is to get you guys to believe in a common goal mm. and get you to achieve that goal the best way possible. Mm-hmm. And he said, if that means that you guys in season all hate me and that's the one thing y'all have in common, then cool. Right. Ooh. And they, as soon as season was done, Total different guy. But from August Funny to November, he's one of the most annoying, aggravating human being. Like, you want to punch dude in the mouth. But it worked. We went to the NCAA tournament twice. I've been to the Sweet 16. Yeah. We won our conference three times. Like, you <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? at the end of the day, it's like, I'm not here. And I think, like, too, when people say, like, you know, like, I'm not here to, like, be your friend. Like, I'm here to actually, like, empower you and instill you with the tools you need to be successful Mm -hmm. i feel like people take that the wrong way but it's like no because sometimes when especially with the kids of today like if you try to be their friend first then they're not gonna listen to you when you have to like maybe come down on them or like you know (sighs) redirect them to a certain way some of them are gonna be like like huh i think that's a case by case damn you were with me until you said that Here's 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 where I the kids that you deal with maybe, but I'm like a lot of kids that I have worked with and seen. I'm like it's you can you can be their friend, right? But I feel like you have to instill that right that to ask. And that's why I said like you can't start off being their friend first. Like you you have to find a happy happy medium. Yeah, you you so I think basically the best way I found to relate to kids middle school to like high school you got to be their friend but also be an authoritative figure like some shit i'm just not letting slide 
You know well, yeah, saying? that's like, what we're saying too. But but you got to be that authority first. Like you could like every classroom I step into first, like I'm very much like cool with y'all, but I'm letting y'all know off rip. Y'all not gonna disrespect me. Like, right, like these are the well, expectations. Right, and, and and then once once I see that y'all understand this. You know, I'm a lighten up a bit, but here is the law. Here is the line. Right. And and that's what we're not going to do. I get it. Yeah, I, we're, we're all saying the same thing. I think we just go about it differently. But like, well, <laughs> sit your way. But you know what it is? Like, I'm, I realize, and like people I've worked with recently have told me this, like, because I'm a bigger person. Like I command. ain't nobody gonna press you. Yeah, like I command. Yeah, I was like, a different ain't nobody stepping up to you unless they they yo same height or taller. Yeah, I command a different type of respect. And like even they're like, yo, when you put on like that 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 deep voice, I was like, what are you talking about? Like, cause there's certain <laughs> times where you gotta like get the room, like yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're just like, oh, okay, my, my bad, my bad. My bad. <laughs> Let me sit on down. Side note too, as far as like working with kids, I much rather work with middle schoolers than high schoolers. I'd rather work with anybody sixth grade and uh fifth grade and up. Okay. Fourth grade and down. Five to like fifth grade to ninth grade, cool. You know what it is? Once you start getting in high school and you get older, in my head I'm like, I can put my hands on you, yo. Like I can really like like yoke you up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like We do not promote violence on the How Did I Get Here podcast no, or child right. abuse. As a mandated reporter, I cannot stand behind that statement. Let that, me just that's that was Spencer that said that. That's why I much rather work <laughs> with like on over. the younger kids because one, with middle schoolers, everything you do is cool. <laughs> so it's just like, all right, bet. And then like, they're more willing to actually like remember and like digest things. Whereas like in high school, you just think you're too cool for things. And you think you know everything. Yeah. And I'm right, just like. Since you got your degree and everything, think you know something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, that, that it just mm. irks the hell. It takes a different type of patience. That I could never be a teacher, mentor. Yeah, teacher. Y'all can have that. Yeah, I feel like I'm still, I'm still deciding like which age group is my is my age group of choice because I'm like working with college students, working with literally like school age kids from like between the ages of like two and seven. I haven't, I haven't hit that middle school, late elementary mm. age yet. That I'm just like. I don't know. Maybe that could be the thing I need to experience to then fully decide. But yeah, these these kids is different. They cool. You just gotta relate to them in some way. So bust your ass, huh? <laughs> yeah, no. High schoolers are just like we were. We were having a conversation about leadership, right? I bet. When when did you become uh, captain? Captain on the soccer team. It was a little unfair. Oops. Like junior, senior type thing? No, I was a captain my freshman year. Okay. But it was because, like, there were two – there was a junior and a senior captain, yeah. and one of them got kicked off the team. Mm. And, like, I was clearly one of the best players, but the coach was trying to, like, change the culture of the team. Mm. So he was kind of, like, using me as an example. Like, yo, this freshman shows up every day. He doesn't complain. He works hard. Like, y'all low-key need to follow his lead. Mm. So Everybody I had was like this freshman? right, and they were like this nigga. But that's the thing; I was starting every game. Oop. I was playing every game, so it was kind of like y'all could talk shit, but y'all also know I'm him, right? So great, I don't see y'all setting the, the standard. Young age. You, get, you get what I mean? So yeah. like for me, did I have any business being captain as a freshman? Absolutely not. Men- mentally, right? Right, right. Like, what the hell am I going to tell an eighteen year old? Right, right. Okay, so but then around junior senior year, but you right junior senior year I, by that, I mean I was obviously still captain. Yeah. But at that point, like, you couldn't, you know, I, 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 one, I know the game, but two, like, I've been here. Right. College, I was capped in my senior year. Okay. To your point. Got it. So, what we were trying to explain to this kid who plays basketball, right? Obviously, you have your coach, coaches, and you come up with game plans, you come up with plays, there's calls and whatnot. But as a captain of the team, there's a certain leadership responsibility where you actually have the right if you got that dog in you to go against what the coach says, like, nah, like, honestly, I know how we play. I'm going to do this in this situation. I agree. And I'm going to live with it. We were trying to get him to understand that. He was like, but that's not how it works. And then so, well, see, you just put yourself in a certain lane. You know right. Like, like, you're not that. So. You put yourself in the lane that's going to conform. So there was <laughs> there was this, this one summer I was playing <laughs> semi-pro, right? And, um. There was, like, the owners of the team had, like, these two or three guys that were, like, 
the captains, the leader of the teams, mm-hmm. but they were like the owner's friends. So they were like self picked, like you, bizarre. yeah, you know what I mean. And, and and then there was everybody else. You get what I'm saying. And these guys really weren't that good, so nobody really like fucking respected them, right? Mm-hmm. So then um, we started off the season zero and three, right? Jeez. And basically there was like twenty six of us on away games, only eighteen players dressed, right? Mm-hmm. So in the summer league, it's like you don't have time to lose games because if you keep losing, you're going to miss out on the playoffs. Okay. Right. So like, it's, it's a quick two month season. Like you, you have to do well and you have to do well fast. right off the jump. Yeah. I was like, that's a fast pace. Right. It's, it's, it's just like a little summer thing. Mm-hmm. Yada. Yada. So we start off zero and three, we're going to Detroit and coach names off the team roster. Right. And I go, this is some bullshit. And he goes... Oh, he heard you. No, I, I wanted him to hear me. Oh, oh. Right? And he's like... Classic Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> and at this point, I think I was like 19. Like, I, you think I don't give a fuck now? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely didn't give a fuck then. And, and he was like, why are you upset? You're on the roster. And I said, I know, but we're 0-3 and you keep picking these sorry-ass niggas and we keep losing. Wow. And... and th- Everybody else, <laughs> right, that was, like, not those three or four niggas that the owners picked yeah. knew exactly what I was saying, <laughs> right? And the coach, like, looked at me. He was like, all right, everybody put your boots back on. And, like, because, like, practice was over. Yeah. We were going home, showering, and then getting on the bus in the morning, right? So then we had to sprint. And, like, some dudes were mad, but then when we were done, like, five or six dudes came up to him and was like, yo, thank you. Like, I wanted to say that, but obviously I don't have the balls that you do. So then, like, the, the coach came up to me after. was like, yo, you know you can't do that, right? I said, I mean, I understand, but are we here to win or are we here to make people happy? Because it, to me, like, this is a quick season. I'm trying to do some things, right? Right. So then he was like, you know, I should send you home. I was like, and if you send me home, you're going to end up 0-12. <laughs> hey, yo. So, like, like what do you want to do? And he said, well... I understand your opinion, but you could have went about it a different way. I said, you're right, but I had to get your respect, and I had to get everybody else's respect. So what are we doing here? And then he was like, well, you're definitely not going to this away game this weekend. And I was like, that's fair. I get it. And then um, after that, so they lost that weekend, of course, right? I didn't play. I was suspended for the game. Yeah. And then the following weekend, he had, like, a whole new starting lineup. We won a game. We won. We had two games, one, one tie one. Okay. And it was like the niggas that you've been playing. And I wasn't captain, but I was one of those dudes that like everybody on the team respected. Right. Everybody listened to whatever Jake said. Like, I right, bro. Like we, we, we running with that. And then you got your weird hand picked captains. And, and that, but after that moment, nobody like questioned anything, mm-hmm. you know, like those guys weren't really playing anymore. You know, and it was one of those things to your point, like if you have that confidence, like if you could talk to talk, but you could also back it up by being a good player. Right. Right. I can come at you. And I probably shouldn't have said that in front of everybody the way I did. <laughs> but bullshit, I, I, I legit was like, like, you remember how I was smacking my food at the beginning of the shit? <laughs> oh my I was gosh. I was doing one of one of them. Hey. And I was like, that's some bullshit. And everybody was like, bro, and, and how soccer is, like, when they read off the roster, mm-hmm. the first 11 are the 11 that are starting. Right. And then the other seven are, like, the, the bench players. Yeah. So I was on that 11. I was starting. Like, we knew that. <laughs> I don't get why you upset. This is some bullshit, bro. I'm tired of losing. Right. Mm-hmm. But I, I was able to, like, have those conversations. And, like, throughout my career, and even as a coach now, like, obviously I call the shots. But I take my count, my captains into account. Right. Like, like I'm gonna ask y'all's opinion. Right. You know what I mean? I'm gonna give y'all that that space to, you know, have a voice. Right. I feel like for me though, because there was a, there was a few things where I was just thinking to myself, like, okay, I understand. You know, you were talking a little crazy, and those things. No, I was wilding. Right. And so it's <laughs> like, yes, and I guess you know the consequence of that was like you end up not playing the game. But at the same time, too, why was it that, like, that had to... I guess the consequence of you kind of being disrespectful to the coach or the coaches still, I guess, like, 
assert his authority of like making everybody else aware like I ain't gonna let nobody talk to me crazy like that and if you do then you benched but at the same time too it's like well clearly he needed the wake-up call because things were and not we going agree. in the right favor of the team and therefore clearly that was showing that like his method of doing things wasn't working so something needed to get changed right so I think for me kind of just like as a person just seeing the picture that you painted with the story i'm just like well why did he feel like it was necessary to bench you and not just have a more even if he didn't have to play you but like still say like okay you know like clearly you know what i'm doing is upsetting you and you see like you're saying like it's affecting the team and our record obviously as we're seeing we're not doing well mm. so like and your opinion as a player like what things are we not doing well you know, and just trying to have that conversation, not making it seem like you're questioning his, like, coaching ability or anything like that. But I was, though. But you were. It's a, to your point, it was one of those, like, if I let this nigga talk to me like this. Right. right then, like, everybody, everybody. everybody's going to talk to you crazy like that. Then nobody's going to respect you in those things. But at the same time, I don't know. I think, like, it's always trying to find those battles of, like, how hard do you come down on? To then say, like, you know, I'm not tolerating this from anybody. Coaching. But also still making yourself available to, like, have a set conversation. Because, again, if you didn't say something, those other people that still wasn't saying anything, were they ever going to say something? Nah. Bitch ass nigga. Mm -mm. One Oop. of them niggas was from North Dakota. Not them like, he had a pet cow. Thing. That nigga wasn't going to say a nothing. A pet what? Shit was, bro. This was a group. If I tell y'all about this summer, <coughs> bro, they put us in, like, a... Like a, a not an abandoned warehouse, but it was just like excuse me a big ass room. I'll show you how the picture after, right? With just bunk beds in it, and like that's where we stayed for the summer. What the fuck? You know, so it's not like we were in an apartment or like yeah. a hotel. And then there was like one weekend that like a camp had like rented out the space, so we came back and it was like motherfuckers in our beds or whatever. So then it was like an abandoned. Um, freaking old people place mm -hmm. right next door and this was the creepiest like just think abandoned retirement home as a child i'm not well, as a 19 year old bro just think abandoned right, and as the parent i've been like what the fuck bro my you... parents don't know this shit <laughs> well, my clearly. parents don't know this shit i was out there bro i'm chasing a dream i had my own job like the team got us jobs so they because yeah. they couldn't pay us but they could get us jobs to like help fund us, you right. know what I mean, and things like that. It was for the summer, and it was better than any training I was going to get back home because I, I went to a D3 school, but I was playing against, like, D1 and D2 players. Yeah. yeah so yeah. even if our practices were shit, the 12 games that I was going to play that summer were was going to prepare me for my incoming season. So it was just like, bro, it's worth it. I think I came home that summer for, like, 10 days and then Damn. dipped right back to Buffalo. But yeah, my parents, bruh, if I could tell y'all some shit about the, the journey that I've been on, you'd be like, nigga, you didn't have to live like that. But it was well, all, that's all right. it's going to be in my memoir. <laughs> memoir. Yeah, my memoir. What? And before we wrap up, sorry. What's interesting about that to me, I just always think about, you worked in corporate for like six months and hated it. Um, hated it. There's like, hated it. There's like corporate jargon and like how to play the game type shit. And, like, some of my friends used to tell me this all the time. Y'all, well, anyone who knows me knows I have issue with authority and being told what to do. Um, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> Could never. So they were like, yeah, man, you know, sometimes you just got to manage your manager. Like, that's not my fucking job. Bro. So, like, that's all I was thinking about when you was talking about the coaching thing. Is like, my thing is, why did it take Jacob – to have to have a fucking outburst for you to realize, yo, we're losing, <laughs> nigga. Like we we are losing. Like what? Like what do you do outside of like this right. interaction? And that's why, that's have you what, been game planning? That's what I also was thinking too. Was like going towards my question. I was like, yeah. I was like, so why? And then it's like he had to then reprimand him for talking out crazy. But it's like, bro, you should have seen this, right? Like, 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 so you was gonna let a fourth game go by to be zero and four, and and did. What do you mean? <laughs> Facts. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Facts. So it, it was just like, to me, that shit used to frustrate me. Like, why do I need to manage my manager when it's like, you're, you've been put in this position to lead a team right. Right. as effectively as possible. So like, 
I don't think people I, – I know for a fact some coaches just don't understand the responsibility that comes with being a coach. Like, mm. it's there's a lot. But, like, that shit would have drove me nuts. I think a good coach knows how to put their ego aside. A mm. bad coach makes it about them. Mm-hmm. So did you respect – like, did you understand and respect him after he benched you for that game? Like, was well, that the not, right move? No, it's I would have done the same thing. Okay. But okay. I also had no yeah. respect for him because I thought he was a bad coach. You right. know what I mean? Like and and there's probably like off the top of my head three coaches that I'd just be like, bro, I have no respect. Like I I genuinely don't believe you're a good coach. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, mm mm. Sorry. Nah, you ain't it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like this dude was just trash. Uh, and especially because like and and I said I wasn't going to bring her up again, but, like, Caitlin Clark, right? Mm-hmm. When a lot of people were talking about her, I was watching a Brianna Stewart interview about her, and they said, no matter what sport and what level you play, the reason you're playing is, is to win, right? to get championships. Oh, mm-hmm. I did see that. Right? So and when you look back, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. And so they, so you're here. Yes, it's just a semi-pro team that's in the summer. Mm-hmm. Whatever you do as your full-time job or your full-time coaching, this is going to be on your resume. Right. This four and eight season is gonna be there. You get what I'm saying? Like, mm. why do you want to be out here sucking? <laughs> and and for me, it's like, bro, it's it's not about you, but it is about you. Yeah. Because at the yeah. end of the day, this is your body of work. I was like, yeah, it's a ref- like how they do is still a reflection of you. So like, therefore, like you still have to care just as much if it was just you doing right. this, but in a selfless way, right? Because again, like you are not the one. You're doing the work, but you're not the ones physically playing the game. It's your players. And your impact is greater than, you know, just coaching. Right. You know, you're you're molding future teachers, future athletes, future coaches. Right. You know, like like think about UConn, right? They're like, yo, we won this is our sixth championship, right? Hurley second. Mm-hmm. But there are four other coaches who have won champ or I think three other coaches who have won championships. But it's UConn has won six. Mm-hmm. Not Hurley's won two. Ollie's got nah, two. You, when you look at the women, it's Gino. <laughs> that's well, that's what? well, that's because I mean, Gino's been there. I was like, it's been yeah. forever. Gino. But you, but you get what I'm saying. It's like my man started as a young buck, and now look at him. Right, he gonna get one next year. Yeah, the, the, the women next year are gonna be scary. Yeah. They, they just healthy. landed the number one recruit. Right. If they healthy. Oh, the well that part. If their health is top tier, they get in three starters back. Just landed the number one recruit, recruit, and Paige is coming back. Yeah, forget yeah, about no, it. And a, Paige is coming back Paige. with a vengeance. Paige. Yeah, as so. she fucking should. But shit, bro, this was fun. It was per nice usual. To chop it up. Yeah, gang, gang. Uh, just love when things come full circle. Circle of life. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, let's do our 15 <laughs> seconds of fame and uh I just need that sound one more time. I can't replicate that. Oh, mm. no. <laughs> <laughs> Simba gone Mexican. I think we gotta cancel that. Yeah. No, no. I thought about Looking saying Puerto not Rican. saying it the first time, but then I said, yeah, I gotta say it. Looking real Puerto Rican. But yeah, let's let's get our, our fifteen seconds of fame and then get up on out of here. I still gotta go home and pack and clean and pack. Yeah, I'm going to Buffalo for a couple of days. Buffalo. Gotta, gotta get out of here. Oh yeah, you have you on vacation this week? I'm on vacation. Oh yeah, April break. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. Go ahead, Ash. <laughs> Ladies first. I gotta tell you, I cried recently. Yeah. Go ahead, bro. It was bound to happen. Um, my 15 seconds of fame. Damn. Put her on the spot. I, you really did. I didn't get Tell time to think. Come. Tell me what it Um, hmm. what do I have for my 15 seconds of fame this week? Don't lose sight of your end goal. Even when life gets you down and life be life in. Because life for me is lifing right now. But I'm keeping my end goal in mind. Oh, this is great to piggyback on. Yes. Um, perseverance is 
one of the biggest things that you can really attach yourself to. You know, you're going through hell right now. There's no point in stopping. You got to keep going, push through, um, and don't make excuses for anything that's happening to you. It's happening for you. It's all um, building you to be a better person. Because, man, I had a crazy first quarter. Um, yeah, I got to catch up on so much. But <laughs> now, shoot, <laughs> shoot, the rest of the year is about to be crazy. Um, so, yeah, to piggyback on what Ash said, you know, meow, 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 meow. <laughs> see you through. Oh, mine. Thank you, Collective Space, for hosting us. Ash Bagas, Spencer. Oh, my. B. Rye, thank you guys for being great. We got some big things on the way. Um, we working. We working. Um, for me, my 15 seconds, a quote from Will Smith's memoir. It, it is better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. That's a fact. Unless you're Mulan. Hey, yo. Yes. <laughs> With that being said, this is the best fucking podcast in CT. We got Mulan, Will Smith, Don Staley, and everybody getting tipsy. It's a wrap. Cut! <laughs>